Okay, hello. Um, if, you, if you don't mind speaking up just a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm here to give you a couple of tips on how to run an hour of code at your school. Um, I just want you to know that I did not start out um, the way I'm going to end the presentation. I started out my first year learning about the hour code after it was over. The second year I um, did the hour of code within my own computer labs. The third year we had a steam our steam team um, found a guest speaker to speak to kick off our hour of code. And this year we are having a family um, code night. So it all depends upon your comfort and um, how you want to run your hour of code. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and how I run my program at my school. Um, in my computer lab, I teach TK through second grade, and we use some coding programs at our school. Um, we use a nine dots program called Pixelbots. We use Code Sparks Academy with the Foos. We use Dash and Dot Robots, and then in the upper grade, we use Lego We Do Twos, Scratch, Tinker, and Swift Playgrounds. Okay. Um, the Hour of Code, I don't believe should just be one week of the year. So at our school, we code throughout the year. So I see um, about 18 classes a week. I have traditional kindergarten that I see 50 minutes, and then I see them an additional 30 minutes just for coding. In kindergarten, I also see them 50 minutes. And within the 50 minute time block, I'm introducing different apps, websites, as well as coding. Um, but they do have 30 minutes built in an additional 30 minutes that they use um, coding program called Pixelbots. Um, our first grade also comes to the computer lab for 50 minutes and they have 45 minutes coding with Pixelbots. And our second grade has 50 minutes a week. And next year they will be receiving 45 minutes coding with Pixelbots. Okay. Okay, so to make sure that we're able to code and use things and devices throughout the year, my computer lab had um, iPads and laptops. Um, our classrooms are one-to-one -one devices. And then we also have a checkout system if um, the teachers want additional devices within their classrooms. Um, at our school, we have teacher trainings. So our teachers stay with their classes during the computer time, and they learn all different apps, websites, and they learn how to code with their children. So in K-1, they participate and they learn um, how to code with Pixelbots program that we use at our school. And I also attend grade level meetings if they have any questions. Um, I answer any questions they have regarding coding, technology, anything they have that I teach. And this year, there was a group of us that um, participated in the CodeSpark launch online PD, which was fabulous for beginners. If you wanna learn how to code, this is definitely the PD to attend. And it's wonderful if you can um, attend um, with a group of teachers. Okay. Um, there are some um, programs that I use for coding. So in kindergarten, first and second grade, 
We use Pizzlebots. We use Scratch Junior. We use Go and Blockly, which go with the Dash and Dot robots, and we use CodeSparks. I basically teach them how to sequence and um, do loops, and then that is like the starting point. And then I make sure they have a strong foundation so that when they go to third through fifth grade, the teacher can move into more difficult concepts as in events or functions. Um, so in upper grade, they continue to use some of the same programs, but they also introduce Tinker, Scratch, Lego We Do's, Code.org. They also use Blockly and Code um, Sparks Academy. And then we have a sixth grade teacher who teaches um, some of the same apps and websites, but he goes more into detail using Code Academy, Lego We Do, Swift Playgrounds, Code.org, Blockly, and Code Sparks. So the three main platforms that I use in my class for coding is Pixelbots with nine dots. And a teacher comes in from nine dots and teaches a class which I observe and then I turn around and I teach my other kindergarten and first grade classes. And what it is is they take um, problems and they build solutions and they learn how to code in kindergarten they learn how to sequence and in first grade they learn loops. We also use um, Dash and Dot robots at our school, and they also have a curriculum that I work with. Um, a lot of the tasks that they um, complete are loops and um, sequencing in kinder and first grade, and we move into events in advanced sequencing in second grade. A lot of the tasks that they are completing correlate to the math and ELA standards. And then we also use the foos. And I introduce a lot of the concepts, the new concepts to the teachers and the students. And this is an app where our students have access to and the teachers feel comfortable with using. So I introduce any new concepts that come out and then they continue this app in their classroom where the other two programs I basically teach in the computer lab due to expenses and robots and everything. But the Foos is definitely an app that anyone can play. So preparing for the hour of code, um, I basically make sure that all the students and teachers are knowledgeable and they have all the apps and websites available to them for the week of the, uh, for the week of code. Um, what I have done is we will take a vote a week prior to the hour of code on which app or website the grade level would like to use. And then I make certificates according to which app or um, website the students want to use. And then the students also continue coding in the classroom after they come to me for an hour of coding. And so here are some certificates, um, a bulletin board I created for the countdown, um, for the hour of code, and just all the kids holding their certificates after they completed an hour of code in the computer lab. And then they go to their classroom and when they have free time, they're able to code with the foods. So, Last year, our STEAM team kicked off the event and we had a guest speaker 
um, Lucy Rivas, who stopped by to inspire our students. And we dressed up for the event, the kickoff event in the morning. And we dressed up as Snoopy for the Snoopy Snowball. <laughs> okay. Our teachers code with our students. They're having fun over here. A little girl is like helping her teacher how to code. <laughs> And then um, during the hour of code, when we have um, an upper grade and a lower grade in each room, we open the doors and we let them challenge each other if they feel comfortable. Um, challenge, the primary students stay in one classroom and if they feel comfortable to challenge an upper grade student, they're able to go to the to next door and challenge um, anyone they would like to challenge. So the kids are able to code across grade levels as well. Um, students code during computer lab, they code um, in their own classrooms. And now some parents are even asking for different apps and websites that they can use at home. At our school, everyone gets involved. The students even code with our director. So this year, our STEAM team has planned the Hour of Code as a family code night. And we're gonna have a guest speaker to kick off the night, food trucks, and then we're gonna have different activities within the school um, that the kids can participate in. We're gonna have Dash robots having races, coding races, popping balloons. We're gonna have um, our Code Sparks Academy. Um, teachers are gonna dress up as the characters and they're gonna have different rooms to play. Um, the Foos in, we'll have code.org set up on desktops. We're gonna have a room where the kinder and first grade um, students can show their parents how to code with pixel bots. And then we have an after school Lego robotics program that the kids will be able to show other students and parents on how to follow a line and have a sumo competition. Now you might say, well, what if I don't have any technology at my school? What can I do? And you don't need technology to participate in the Hour of Code. They have many unplugged lessons from this um, computer science education community, and I've listed a couple of them. The unplugged lessons are just the same as if you have a device in your hand. It's just more hands-on. And then I also listed a few resources that we use at our school. Code.org, Code, Acad uh, Code Sports Academy, Dash and Dot, Ozobot, Scratch, Scratch Junior, Swift Playgrounds, and Tinker. Um, there's also other apps that you can use. Um, they're all free. There's Codable and Lightbop. And some of these are specific to just the hour of code. And some of them you can code with throughout the year. And then here are some more website based. If you don't have iPads or um, the tablets, you can also use um, some web based products. I'm actually with uh, VIP Kid, and I just got uh, the certification for the new uh, coding class that started, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this week. So uh, I had two classes this morning, and I saw I'm always about the more information, the better. So that's why I signed up for today, just to, you know, see people from the company, hear about it, and so forth. And also to see if I could probably add this as well for the kids, like as after, you know, after a class that I have with them, if I can add on extra coding because I had two kids and they're so excited already. It was just their first class. So I'm trying to have the most information to, to give to them afterwards, basically. To give listeners some additional context, 
CodeSpark recently partnered with VIP Kid, an online tutoring company, to deliver computer science education to kids in China. U.S.-based teachers work from their homes to teach online courses with expertly developed interactive lesson plans. To extend your students' learning, we recommend sharing the list of coding websites provided in the webinar. You can also find unplugged activities on CodeSpark's teacher dashboard by navigating to Lessons and then clicking Unplugged Activities. Download activities by clicking on the down arrow icon to your right. Even if you're not a typical classroom teacher, you can get students involved with Our Code by sharing unplugged activities and encouraging parents to print and complete them with their child. Perfect. Thank you for all those websites. That's a lot of information. That's more than I thought I'd be getting. So that's thank you very much. <laughs> Were you able to get a picture or a screenshot so you can refer back to them? I took some screenshots, but I think we're gonna have, are we gonna have access to the video afterwards as well? I think so, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll print everything else nicely so I'll have it uh, all backed up properly. I'm the math specialist teacher at my school, but we also, I work, we're STEM certified, so we do a lot of, um, I collaborate a lot with the science specialists and we try to get coding in. Um, as best we can, as much as we can. So we've been doing that this week. Our big, my big problem and what I'm trying to figure out how to solve is I see all 900 children or 1,000 children in our school over a six week period. And, and they have um, you know, a lot of different abilities and things. But it seems like some of the programs that are out there, they want us to set up teacher accounts, which are great, except I don't think they expect a teacher to set up an account for 900 children. So I'm trying to figure out how I can, what I can do so that I can have kids use them in my, use the programs and different things and apps in my classroom. But with so many students, I'm not sure how to do that. Absolutely. That's a very common concern for instructors such as yourself who are serving your entire school or district. On CodeSpark Academy, for example, you can create a profile for each child so their, their progress is not compromised and you can track each student individually through the teacher dashboard. In the same dashboard, you can actually upload CSV files of your classroom roster so you don't have to input all 900 names. The number of classrooms you can create are endless. I have about like 40 classrooms on my account that I manage and for that we can see right so I just upload the CF, uh, CVS file, no, CSV. CSV file. And that's, that's the most programs now that you can just upload the files and it makes it a lot easier, really easy to manage. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Now, we we have a big question with our district about um, access to student data. Does CodeSpark in any way that you know of, do they access our data? Because I know that puts the bit, you know, a lot of things they have put the, um, not a lot of us to do because of the privacy in, of our students. At CodeSpark, we care very much about your privacy. You can access our privacy policy at any time by scrolling down to the bottom of our website and clicking privacy. As creators of apps for children and as a community of parents of young kids ourselves, CodeSpark is proud to be part of the KidSafe SEAL program and aim to comply with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. In short, we limit the input of personally identifiable information so students cannot share information to the public. In addition, a CodeSpark trained team reviews every game and story that is published within the CodeSpark community to ensure that student data is never shared out. Am I able to add my students so I can just see their progress instead of me managing but just following it? The answer is yes. In the teacher dashboard, navigate to classroom, then click view to see your classrooms. Here you can assign additional teachers, connect devices, and more. By clicking View Student Progress, you can track the progress of each student and overview your classroom's mastery of computer science concepts.
You can also edit app options, like turning off specific game functions to prevent students from wandering into different parts of the app.